celebrate five years of upward of worship. Can you just glorify God with me? Clap your hands. Make a sound of praise in this place. Five strong years of upward of worship. Although we are called to worship, this is our landmark to just express ourselves and be free before the Lord. And it has marked our five years. And we're here, we're just grateful unto God. Around this time, marking Thanksgiving, it's very significant to us. We celebrate our families. We eat our wonderful turkeys. We sit around the table and we discuss about things we are thankful for, memories we have. But in this moment, I want your main focus to be on God. In this moment, we are going to be thankful for his grace, for his mercy, for his love, for his protection on our lives. We are all dressed beautifully. We all look handsome. We all look beautiful before the Lord. But don't be afraid to pour out your heart onto our God this morning. We are not here just to look pretty and practice and sing and all those things. But we are here because we're here to reference the King. The King of glory. The King of praise. The King who is worthy to be honored. So please, I urge us all to lose ourselves in this worship. As we worship the King, the only way we connect to God is through worship and through the Holy Spirit. So as we invite the Holy Spirit to take place in our midst, as we invite the Holy Spirit to take control in our midst, do not stare at the person on your left, do not stare at the person on your right, look up to Him. Do not be distracted in this time of worship. Romans 12 verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is our true worship. Something that is pure. Something that is clean unto our God, for He alone deserves it. So as we invite the Holy Spirit to come and dwell amongst us, we are surrendering our service and we are surrendering our worship. Jesus, you are welcome.
Worship Him, worship Him. Spirit, we need you in this place. We need you to fill our hearts. Open the room as we worship you. Open our hearts as we worship you. Let our worship be accepted unto our God. We worship you
by our Jesus, our Jesus, our sweet Jesus. He deserves to be worshipped. He deserves to be lifted up on high. Rumah 
Lift up your voice, O ye gates, and be lifted up, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He's the Lord strong and mighty.
Yes, lift up your worship unto God. Lift up your worship unto God. You want to lose yourself in the atmosphere. You want to encounter the presence that day. You want God to hear you today. You want God to know that you are grateful. You want God to know that you are thankful. The Bible says, lift up your voice, holy gates, and be lifted up. For the King of Glory will come in. And who is this King of Glory? This is the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He said when you lift him up, he will come in. He will come in. Oh Lord, we give you glory. We sing praises unto you, my God. Yes, God. Nothing compares to you. You 
you alone are God. You are God alone. Who can be compared unto you? We search all over. We say you alone are God. You are God alone. God alone. You are God.
just worship you, God. You are great. You are great. searched all over and we know there is no one greater than thee there is no one that exceeds your works there is no one that exceeds your power there is no one that exceeds your blessing there is no one that exceeds your miracles there is no one that exceeds anything you do there is our service unto you God this is our service unto you God this is our service unto you, God. This is our service unto you, God. This is our service unto you, God. <laughs> there's a song that says, there's a song that says, I will serve no foreign God or any other treasure for you Lord are my heart's desire you are my spirit without measure and so unto your name I will bring my sacrifice Le 
ville qui tient ma vie. Seigneur Jésus, tu es le ville qui tient ma vie. Seigneur Jésus, tu es, tu es le ville qui tient ma vie. Master Jesus, Master Jesus, you are the healer of my soul.
the one who moves mountains. He who makes a way where there seems to be no way. He is the I am that I am. The maker of the heavens and the earth. Everything revolves around him. He is the pillar that holds your life. He is the brightest of the morning sun. I El Shaddai. Receive your glory this morning. Receive your honor this day. Our heart is full of glory. Amen. Our heart is full of praise. Amen. We exalt your holy name. Amen. We magnify your name. Oh, you are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. Yes, Everything that has breath is worshiping you, oh God. We lay down our crowns before your throne. Say, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Yes. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We give glory to God. Hallelujah. Please, you can take your seat. You are most welcome today into the house of God. This is Pentecost International Worship Center, a place where God himself lives. So this is the house of God. You are not here by accident. God had predestined for you to be here today. And I am glad you are here. I am excited to see you. Praise the Lord. It is a joy to see familiar faces and also to see new ones. Hallelujah. This is what we do on a Thanksgiving Sunday. So let me take this opportunity to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Hallelujah. Amen. We thanking God for what he has done, how far he's brought us in the year. It was amazing when I was messaged yesterday by Jennifer that it's been five years since we began outpour of worship. That setting a day aside to purely worship God in the beauty of his holiness. And I'm like, wow, five years already. But that is how far God has brought you. So when you wake up in the morning and when you are sitting in your seat right now, I want you to reflect over the past five years, the goodness of God that has come upon your life. Hallelujah. We, I want to especially welcome my father, Pastor Lawrence Menu, in the house today. Church, let's give it on to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man of God, you are most welcome. Amen. Church, let me announce to you, and I think the area head will come and do proper announcement. Let me announce to you that from today, Pastor Menu is a member of this church. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we, we, we are blessed beyond measure. Praise God. And, and we know you and I are going to tap into the anointing of God upon his life. The wisdom God has endowed on him. And I remember a year ago in November when he stood here and powerfully prophesied over your life. Oh, more of such anointing is about to overflow. Papa, you are most welcome. Amen. I see my friend, actually my friends, Mr. and Mrs. Buafo in the house. God richly bless you. Pep and Kwame, you are welcome. Amen. The theme for the month is, and I'm not here to preach, but to exalt you. The theme for the month is my service, my worship. And we're looking at worshiping God in the beauty of his holiness. And there's a popular passage in the Bible in John 4, where Jesus talks about true worship. Praise the Lord. And I believe having worshiped God in this wonderful way, it is about time we acknowledge the object of our worship. Praise the Lord. See, for many of us, we are too concerned about the where of the worship. How the environment looks like. How beautiful the song is. How wonderful the voice is. How soothing it is to our ears. But we forget about the person for whom we are worshiping. The object of your worship. Praise the Lord. And I believe this morning you did not just speak words into the atmosphere. I believe you did not just sing songs for singing's sake. I, I, I'm trusting God that 
when you stood up on your feet and you lifted up your hands, you were worshipping God for who he is. You were worshipping the I am that I am and not just singing songs. And you did not come here because it's a beautiful place. Well, our church is not done anyway. So if it is the way of the worship, then I, 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 I must say you got it wrong. But it is not about the way. It's about the person you have come to worship. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And in John 4, when Jesus encountered that woman and they were having their conversation, her concern was about the way. That you people say we should worship on this mountain. But I, I, we say we should worship here. And Christ is saying to her, Madam, it's not about the way. It's about the individual you are worshiping. And, and, and the title of my exhortation is, Know the God you worship. Praise the Lord. So turn with me to John chapter 4. And I read 21 to 24. And reading from the New Living Translation. John chapter 4, verse 21 to 24. Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship. While we Jews know all about him. For salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming. And indeed it is here now. When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship. But as for us Jews, we know all about him. Because he has revealed his glory and his might and his power to us. And I spent the whole of early hours of this morning looking at Deuteronomy chapter 4 all through to chapter 8. And Moses was admonishing the people of Israel not to worship any other God, not to serve any other God, but to serve the I am that I am. Not to acknowledge or ascribe worship to anyone, not to bow down to any man-made thing, not to serve any man-made idol, but to serve the one who delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians. And he's recounting the power God revealed to them. And he said, God did all this so that you will get to know him. God demonstrated his might and his power. He spoke to you through the fire so you will hear his voice and obey his commands. So you will have that personal relationship with him. So you will encounter him in a special way. So you will devote yourself to him and him alone that he is my object of worship. For he is the one who has redeemed me. And all too soon, the people of Israel will forget about what God has done for them. They will forget about this great I am, this great Jehovah, this great El Shaddai, this great Elohim, this great Adonai. They will forget about him and begin to serve other gods. Praise the Lord. And when God had disciplined them and had taken them out of their land, the king of Assyria brought people from every part of his kingdom into the land of Samaria. So it was a misculture. And the Bible says the king took a priest from Bethel to go and teach them how to worship the God of the heavens. But when they were taught, they still held on to the gods of their fathers where they had been brought from. Because these people who were living in that land at that time, due to the, the eh, 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 disobedience of the Israelites, these were foreign people who did not know Jehovah God. And so they came with their own gods. They came with their own little, little gods. But when they were taught how to worship Jehovah, they still held on to their God. Yes, they feared God. Yes, they knew him, that he is powerful. But they were holding on to their gods. So Jesus is saying to the Samaritan woman, you do not know about this guy. 
If you knew Jesus, if you knew God, if you knew the Father, you will let go of these idols and worship the I am that I am. If you knew how he died to redeem you from your sins, if you knew how he shed his blood for you, you, you will let go of anything and everything that inhibits you drawing closer to him and you come close to him because he alone is God. Praise the Lord. Do you know this God? Do you know the object of your worship? Or your concern is about the where and the how of the worship? Yes, the where and the how is important, but if you don't know the why you're worshiping, you worship him anyhow. You sing songs into the air because you don't acknowledge his supremacy and his power over your life. You don't acknowledge him as the Lord of my life. Yes, you may declare him as Lord, but truly is he reigning in your life? Has he taken hold of your being? Is he the one directing your affairs every day of your life or you are in charge of your life? Who is in charge of your life? Do you know this God? See, God is the one that we have to worship. And Christ said that the Father is looking for such true worshipers. See, the true worshiper is the one who knows Christ is the truth of God and he is the only way to the Father. The true worshiper. The one who knows that Jesus Christ is the word. From the beginning, eternity past, he was, he is, and he is to come. That person is the true worshiper. One who is committed to the things of God. One who is committed to obey him to the letter. Praise the Lord. Are you a true worshiper? Do you know this God? Praise the Lord. Or you are just here for the beauty of it. says you Samaritans know little about him. See, people can know about you, but will not really know you. You understand me? When I ask you to talk about Justin Trudeau, you can tell me all about Justin Trudeau, but do you really know Justin Trudeau? Perhaps not. You've not even met him before. But you can tell me everything from his childhood to the picture with him with the black face and everything. You can tell me all about it because you've read it in the, in, in the newspapers. But have you really encountered Justin Trudeau where you can say, I know Justin Trudeau? Yes, you may have been taught about God from your infancy. You may, have been, you may have read about him in your religious class and all those places. But I want to ask you, do you really, really know this God? Have you encountered him? Have you experienced him? Have you said to him, Lord, I give you my life. Take hold of my life and let it be consecrated to you every day of my life. Have you done that? Have you had that encounter with Christ? It's not about head knowledge. It's about experiential knowledge. Praise the Lord. And when the woman encountered Christ, and Christ revealed himself to her, that day her life changed. See, when you encounter him, your life does not remain the same. He takes you from death to life. He takes you from darkness into the light because he is the light. Praise the Lord. So you can't encounter Christ and still remain in darkness. You, can't, you cannot encounter Christ and still be on the path of destruction. You have to move. He brings you back to the path of life. For in him is life and he gives life and gives life in abundance. Do you know the God you worship? How well do you know him? Is it a casual knowledge like you know about Justin Trudeau? Or if you've, you've really met him? When Paul met him on the road to Damascus, yes, he knew about this God. From his childhood, he said, I sat under the feet of Gamaliel, and he, I have been taught the scriptures. When it comes to righteousness after the law, listen, there is no one equal to me. Oh, but when I encountered Christ, I saw all these things as dunk. If you encounter Christ, it's not about what you have stated. It's the experience you've had. So when you are speaking, you speak from a place of experience. Because I really know him. I know how he is like. I know what he wants and what he dislikes. I know what makes him happy and what makes him sad. Praise the Lord. When you encounter Jesus, oh, he reveals his mind unto you. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. It is my prayer that this Thanksgiving will not just be the regular one that you eat your turkey and that is it. But in this Thanksgiving, you will see Jesus. You will really meet Jesus. And he will be the object of your worship. You will not bother about the where and the how because you know the one you are worshiping. Because true worshipers, they worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. Because if you know him, you get to know the truth. The truth of life. And there's only one truth. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can go to the Father except through Jesus. You cannot get to heaven if you go other way. Yes, there are other ways, but there's only one way. There is only one way. And that way is through Jesus Christ. It's not about coming to church. It's not about being here Sunday, Monday, Friday, Saturday, and for next month being here the whole of the month. Or even fasting. It's about a personal knowledge, a personal relationship, a personal encounter with the one who died for you. The one who sacrificed his life for you. The one who laid down his life so that you will have life and have it in abundance. Praise the Lord. Are you worshiping this God? And if you're worshiping him and you don't know him, this day I'm glorifying Jesus to you. Today I'm lifting him high to you. He said, if I be lifted high, I will draw all men unto myself. I'm lifting him high so that he will draw you. And I pray that you open up your spirit to receive him into your life. I don't care how long you've been in the church. It does not matter to me. Because this woman was talking about worship. Meaning, she's been going to church. Talking about the place of worship. Meaning, perhaps every Sunday she goes there to worship. But she had no knowledge of the one he was, she was worshiping. She was just worshiping. So, maybe you've been coming here worshiping, singing praises. But, to who? I don't know. But today, I want you to know that Jesus should be your object of worship. That you should release your spirit and your life to him. And surrender everything of yours to him. Get to know him as he is. As the lamb of God. Who was crucified from the foundations of the earth. All because of you. Get to know him. As the life giver. Praise the Lord. Get to know him. As the one who will quench the test of your soul. Get to know him. As the one who will quench the hunger in, of your soul. Get to know him. As the one who will heal you from every sin disease. Get to know him that way. And your life will never be the same. Praise the Lord. Are you stressed by life? Are you burdened by situation? He says, cast all your cares and your worries on me. Cast it. You know, the idea of casting is not being careful. How you put it. You just throw it anywhere, anyhow. So if it hits the person by the head, by the stomach, by the leg, you don't care. The idea is to cast. If you ever live by the, the, the sea and you see a fisherman casting their net, they throw it. So Christ is saying, throw whatever you have. The kitchen sink with all the dirty water, throw it at me. I don't care. I will take it. Cast all your cares, your burdens, your worries, your anxieties on Christ. For he cares for you. Praise the Lord. And he is willing to take that hit. He has already taken the hit for your sake. Praise the Lord. So there's no need for you to walk around carrying that burden. There's no point walking around carrying that pain. Let Christ have that pain. Relieve that pain. That worry unto Christ. And he will set you free. Praise the Lord. He died for you. And he's prepared to do everything to make your life whole. Praise God. But the time is coming. And indeed, it is here now. See, you don't have to wait for tomorrow to worship God. You don't have to wait for next week, next month, or next year's Thanksgiving to say, I'm going to give my life to Christ. The time is coming. 
and the time is here now. Today is the day that you have to make that decision that I'm going to surrender to God. Today is the day that you have to relinquish the authority of your life into the hands of the one who has all authority. Praise the Lord. The time is now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. If there's any decision that has to be made, Christ said to the woman, woman, the time is coming and indeed it is here now. So this is the time for true worshipers to arise. This is the time for people to know their God. This is the time for believers to surrender and children of God to relinquish everything they have to God. This is the time. The time is now. Praise God. So you have any decision to make concerning your salvation and your eternity. This is the day. Most of you travel by air and you go through transits. And even if you are going on a vacation, you don't carry everything in your house on that vacation trip. You just pack a bag. Why? Because you know you come back. That is not your final destination. Yes, I'm going there for one week, three weeks, whatever. If you're going to spend a month, you're going to come back. So you carry a bag. In the same vein, you and I are just on vacation on this earth. We came from somewhere and we're going to go back to where we came from. To the Father. Where are you going to spend your eternity? Hallelujah. we just here on a temporal basis. This is not our home. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are not from this place. So if you're thinking this is my home and you are settling here, I'm sorry to tell you that the earth and everything in it will pass away. So that which you call your home will pass away. Just yesterday I was watching the news and in California, there's a fire raging and a family, they've lost everything. When I say everything, they've lost everything. The only thing they carried was the clothes they were wearing and the phone they had in their hands. So if your faith was in that building and that property you've acquired, it is gone. But there's one person who will not go anywhere. And he will take you to your destination. And that person is Jesus Christ. He is coming back. The time is now. Not, not, not too long. He will be coming. And he will be coming for those who belong to him. I pray that today you make a decision for Christ. You make a decision to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. You make a decision. Don't wait. For tomorrow is never yours. Praise the Lord. Don't wait. The time is now. The time is now. That true worshipers will have to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. See, your life matters to Jesus. Your life, it matters to him. And he doesn't want you to waste your life. That is why he's calling on to you to Come to him, and he will take care of your life. Today, make the choice to serve the one who is the object of true worship or to serve the gods and the material things of this world. God richly bless you. Amen. Shall we be on our feet? And I humbly ask the choir to help me up here. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow. my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee oh take my moments and my days let them
as never before with a heart of gratitude and worship and appreciation that at all times we will know you and experience you all the more as our redeemer, as our keeper, as our creator, as our Lord and King. May you reveal yourself unto us day by day so that we know the deeper things of you, O oh Lord, and crave and yearn and hunger for you. You fill us with your spirit to the overflowing. Direct and guide us in all our ways. Set our hearts and minds on you, O Lord, that you only will be our delight, our worship, and our praise. In Jesus' name we bless. Amen. 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 